Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speech to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be forever. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I think that can be seen as well live over on YouTube. Still working that out. But uh, good morning to you all. Welcome to Martin this morning for our service of morning prayer on this the seventh Sunday of Easter, which is the Sunday between Ascension and Pentecost, a time of expectation and awaiting between two great feasts time of anticipation of what the Spirit might do amongst us. But before we come back to all that, uh, notices. Barry. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. Good morning. Let me have some light. It's nice to see you. Uh, we've got one or two notices on the Monday, the 24th of May. That is our AGM at 7.30 and it's being Zoomed. On a Wednesday the 19th of May is our local wage meeting. That is 7.30 and that is also Zoomed. And also just reminder that we're now back to the first Sunday service which is communion and the third Sunday which is like today is morning prayer. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Um, also, uh, I published Bands of Marriage between Rachel Lee Kirby and Jack Gardner Hammond, both of St Paul's Monton. This for the third time. But also between Jessica Alice Hamley and Philip James Singleton, both of Parish of St Thomas Friar. And this for the second time of asking. Any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. Thank you very much. And as that's three times for Jack and Rachel, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the gift of love. We give thanks for the estate of marriage. We pray for Rachel and Jack as they prepare for their life together, for their marriage, and for the wedding this coming Saturday. I've got my dates right. Bless them in their loving, bless them in their family life, and bless all who seek to live in your love. Amen. Amen. Things may be loosening up, we shall see as, as the days go on. For now, we can't sing, but we can listen. So, our first hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
of him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, God we, we have sinned sin against, against you. We, we have believed in your sight. We are so angry. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoings and cleanse us from our sin. Will you arrive straight in us and restore us to the joy of your salvation? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That we may know God's presence with us this day, let us pray with one heart and mind. Eternal light, have mercy upon us, that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought to your holy presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We hear our Bible reading. Our reading comes from John, chapter 17, beginning at verse 6. I have made your name known to those who gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, and from the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, and not asking on the behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those who you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. I have been glorified in them, and now I will no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one, as you are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name, that they had given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak these things in the world so that you may know that they have joy and may complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world that has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I not do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong in the world, just as I do not belong in the world. Sanctify them in the truth, your words is true. As you have sent me to the world, so I have sent them into the world. As for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Page five for the morning canticle, the Benedictus. We stand. You'd like to respond with the even numbered verses. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has made us a Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to, to show mercy to our ancestors, 
unto the hand of his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, who set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all our sins. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable to thee, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Well, first, may I say how nice it is to actually be able to stand in front of a live audience, having for the last uh, few uh, months or year, last year, I was actually looked at a camera but not really see many people in a congregation. So it's really quite nice. And I echo that back to Ethan this morning as well. It's just so nice that we are seemingly coming, getting a little bit more normal. Uh, I know not quite normal. We all have to wear masks and things when we have all this. We feel that we are, things are happening. And let us just pray that is the case. Christ taught us the truth of God through his words, and actions. Words from an Anglican clergy person who I believe serves in the Diocese of Manchester called Ian Bullock, who posted an article online on what we have come to refer to as Jesus's farewell prayer, part of which forms our gospel reading today, that the farewell prayer starts at the beginning, end of the, the chapter to 16 of John and finishes in chapter 18. Some years ago, I was privileged to be able to attend a gathering of clergy and lay ministers at Chester Cathedral, where we were addressed by the former Archbishop of York, the Most Reverend, I have been told, Dr. John Centre uh, I would call him Centre Nouveau, no, but uh, that's John Centre Nouveau. The theme of his address was Jesus's farewell prayer and how we, as ministers of the church, should not only view the prayer in terms of our own faith, but also see it as a guide to how we are faithful witnesses to Christ. Dr. Sentamu made it very clear that the prayer had been central to his faith and to his understanding of how we dealt with the many complex issues that affect us in everyday life. He concentrated on the third part of the prayer, which he felt was a call for unity in diversity. I made it very clear that God's love is unconditional and that we, as mere mortals, are not on earth to judge our fellows on how they live or what their lifestyles are. And that the message of the prayer was very much a call to us, as disciples of Christ, to show the same unconditional love our Lord showed. Of course, the third part begins roughly at verse 20, and our reading today finishes at verse 19. The second part of the prayer, which is loosely our reading, is Jesus' heartfelt prayer to his disciples. But what do we mean by disciple? Some think it only means those who walk with our Lord. But Dr. Sentinel made it very clear that he saw himself as a disciple and saw all who confessed the name of Jesus as disciples. That we should not see discipleship as a biblical phenomenon, but as ongoing. That all who believe in the good news, which is Christ Jesus, are in effect disciples. 
Likewise, it is very easy to see Jesus as praying to the Father to look after his trusted disciples, those that knew him and had walked with him after he had gone. But as Dr. Sentinel pointed out, it is not just aimed at those that were around him. It is not just for the 12 or the other disciples and followers. It is a heartfelt prayer to all who were and have have and are to follow. Follow in the footsteps of those original disciples. For whether we are lay or ordained, we are all disciples. When we talk of the disciples, we generally think of the 12 that are collectively called the apostles. But the Bible makes it very clear that there were many more following Jesus. And from them, many more became followers. And that continued after Jesus' crucifixion. In the book of Acts, we learn of new disciples, disciples that probably never saw the Lord. And as such, the church developed as more and more were attracted to become followers of Christ. And this has continued throughout the ages. This prayer is very much a prayer for us, a prayer for all who confess that Jesus is Lord, no matter what our station in life. It is a prayer that is timeless and has inspired many throughout the generations to become great witnesses to our Lord, as well as being a prayer of comfort for those who may not do great things in the great scheme of things, but are equally valued servants of Christ. When one really looks at this reading, when one grasps the reality of what Jesus is saying and realises that he is not just saying this for the benefit of those around him, but is praying for all of us, for all who are to follow in whatever age, then we start to get a glimpse of Jesus' love for humanity. We need to see this prayer not in terms of Jesus praying for us, but in sheer wonderment that here is the chosen one, the Christ, the one who we believe is the word made flesh, who is God incarnate, praying for you and for me. When we have grasped the fact that we are as much his disciples as those that were around him when he walked on earth, and that he loves us in the same way, then the whole prayer starts to take a more meaningful look to us today. The prayer talks of us as disciples, being in the world, but not of the world, and goes on to ask that his joy will be complete in us. In other words, we as disciples will continue to show God's truth. When we start to realise that being a follower of Christ today is following in the footsteps of those that have gone before, that the farewell prayer is as much for us today as it was for those then. All of a sudden, the phrase, being in the world but not of the world, suddenly becomes much clearer. For though God loves the world, we are only passing through it. We are, we are part of the world only in the sense that we inhabit it. But if we truly follow Christ, we are destined for another world, the kingdom of God. And it is through the teachings and the word of Jesus that we not only get glimpses of that kingdom, we also see more clearly the folly of the world we are in. We all know that to follow Jesus, we must be prepared to speak out against injustice, to help those less fortunate, to comfort those in need, to forgive those that wrong us to seek peace and reconciliation. Yet we all know that we have all, all, all failed badly in that, doing any of those things. And we all fail in just trying to follow Christ. This is what makes the farewell prayer so remarkable. Because despite our faults, Jesus still prays for us, still wants us to go out and show God's love. For throughout his sojourn on earth, Christ showed humanity the truth of God's love. That pattern has now been entrusted to us, his disciples of today. 
to show in our words and actions God's love. And though this may seem daunting, if we embrace the farewell prayer, then we will, like Dr. Centenu and so many others, find that strength that despite our own frailties, foibles and failures, that we can go out to love and serve the Lord in both our words and deeds, in whatever way we feel called to do so, knowing that as long as we try our best, then Jesus has, through his prayer, sanctified us, embraces us, guides us, and is with us this day and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Howard. I met Archbishop Sensenu just the once, which is a story for another time, but an unforgettable presence. And I'm sure on that occasion he spoke about being disciples, being learners in the way of love. Shall we stand for the creed on page seven? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and he was in danger. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before our intercessions, we hear our second thing. Rejoicing in the fellowship 
that all your spirits we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The comment prayer for today. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless to us, O Lord, our walk with you. The earth beneath our feet, and the path before our eyes. Bless to us, O Lord, our walk with you. The world before our hands, the rest of the end of the day. Bless to us, O Lord, our walk with you. The people, people we shall meet, our families and our homes. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn.